Prime Minister Skerritt reacts to the presence of a UWP delegation in Guyana seeking to engage CARICOM heads on developments surrounding last Tuesday's protest action and call for his resignation. French national arrested for theft and money laundering and the DFP's Johnson Boston detained, questioned and released without being charged. I'm Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details coming up. First stop, executive member of the Dominica Freedom Party, Johnson Boston, was briefly detained by police for questioning on Friday in connection with a UWP public meeting in Roseau. Boston is the latest person to be brought in for questioning by police since last week's public meeting. Dr. Sam Christian, Thompson Fontaine and Claudia Sanford are among the others questioned as part of police investigations so far. Boston says about 5.15 Friday morning, he heard a knock at his door, which turned out to be the police. He says officers conducted a thorough search of his apartment and asked him to accompany them to police headquarters. I contacted um, lawyers and Hildon Richard, which did a fantastic job in there. He advised me and um, I'm Noelis Naidide, who also was there, did a very good job in defending media and advising. And then Julian Prevo um, came out as well and provided some support. But they said they wanted two lawyers at any, at any given time in the, in, in the room, because it was a small room really. I would say the police were very cordial, I mean, um, <clears throat> they were not hostile, but I just think that um, if the police force has been used as a Totomaku kind of mongoose gang kind of thing, it would be sad for Dominic and for the police, um, which was to protect all citizens. Yep. The focus is not on color, who red and who green and who blue, it's on all citizens. That's their responsibility. And um, when I heard Gildan said, but of all persons, you are... Um, John Sebastian, you, you, you all are arrested bringing here. I'm um, saying that he's um, for subversion. And they said they went to my home to look for documents that indicate um, inciting violence and so on. Thank God they got nothing about that, inciting violence. And the interview went well. Boston says the recent arrests are politically motivated and designed to su suppress democracy and free expression. Do you feel intimidated as to what is going on and what transpired today? Well, I am not intimidated, I just felt sorry for the country. Yeah. And I've never seen leaders and supporters being interrogated like I'm seeing now. I remember the, when we were in government in, in um, 90 to 95, there was a big demonstration when the Freedom Party by SRNO increased vehicle licenses. And then Rosie Douglas made so rest in peace, and the Labour Party, Ambrose was then this guy's, um, Austria was, a, was then a member of the party then. And they organized a, a, a mass protest and demonstration. In fact, people coming from um, North had to leave their vehicle in um, Canefield and walk into Rosu. And nobody got arrested. Mr. Boston was not charged. Prime Ministers wrapping up CARICOM's 28th Intercessional Heads of Government meeting in Guyana were updated on the status of the Single Market and Economy CSME. Prime Minister Skerritt, who is the outgoing chairman of CARICOM, wants to see the full implementation of the CSME. Of particular concern is the inability of the Legal Affairs Committee comprising of our Attorneys General to come together to deal with critical agreements with respect to both the CSME and regional security. I am also concerned that our Council for Finance and Planning has not been able to meet for a considerable period of time. We can and certainly must do better. For example, the Prime Minister wants to see progress on an ICT roadmap. Recommendations were due to be presented to conference heads for consideration during the two-day meeting in Guyana. As heads of government, we have a responsibility to ensure that those who have been tasked with fulfilling our mandates participate fully in the relevant discussions. We are dealing with matters that strike at the heart of both the concerns of our community and the strengthening of our integration movement. Indeed, these matters are also of great significance to all our countries domestically. The completion of the regional security architecture, for example, has resonance regionally and nationally, as we need these institutional arrangements to combat the scourge of crime that is afflicting us all. Cross-border crime is a serious concern within our community. We need the legal instruments to combat it in our countries as well as regionally. This is a time for action. 
We cannot afford the luxury of procrastination. And Prime Minister Skerritt has reacted to the presence of the opposition leader in Guyana, seeking to inform CARICOM heads on why the EWP is demanding his resignation. Mr. Skerritt called into Kyrie FM's hang on Friday morning, saying he would use his interaction with Guyanese media to promote the country. When I do meet with the Guyanese media, uh, my first order of business will be to tell them about Mass Dominic and invite them to the greatest island carnival action in the Caribbean. That is what any patriotic Dominican, especially in the leadership of the country, with a microphone, would do one week before his nation's carnival. So it is my first intention uh, to invite the Guyanese and Caribbean people to all Mass Dominic especially at a time when there is an increase in creativity for the carnival. The, the government has increased the budget by, by, by more than 100% last year. So, uh, Simeon, mm -hmm. Dominica is a sovereign state, and it has never been, is not now, and will never be my policy to air its domestic laundry clean, dirty, or otherwise outside of Dominica. And the presence of Mr. Linton and his two colleagues here is a further testimony to the fact that Mr. Linton has no interest in the welfare and well-being of Dominica. Mm -hmm. His mad rush to be a prime minister of the country and his impatience is, 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 is clearly, as you said, a danger to Dominica. The Prime Minister said unlike the current opposition leader, past opposition leaders used their trips abroad to seek assistance for Dominica. Police and the Financial Intelligence Unit, FIU, have arrested and charged French national René Philippe for theft, deception, fraud and money laundering under the Money Laundering Act of Dominica. Between Tuesday, November 1, 2016 and Friday, 10th February 2017 at National Cooperative Credit Union ATMs in Goodwill, Independent Street and High Street, the accused unlawfully obtained 11,000 EC dollars from NCCU by the use of Apple iTunes gift cards. He is also charged with possession of a credit card reader to manufacture counterfeit cards. 25,000 EC dollars and over 1,000 US was found in his room at a local guest house. He is represented by Wayne Norde and Tiani Behanzin. The magistrate will make his ruling on the matter on Thursday, February 23. Philippe is on remand at Stock Farm Prison. On to Calypso now, where Janet Jackson has made it two in a row as she retained her title of Calypso Queen. The competition saw seven ladies vying for the title on Thursday night at the Eddie Andre Carnival City in Pottersville. Round one consisted of an original song by the performer, while round two paid tribute to the recently deceased Calypsonians Michael Bouple Lafleur and Leandra Coffey. Janet's tribute song was Pray For Me by Leandra. Second place went to Nakel Walsh, who sang Skeletons by Bouple as her tribute piece. Third place went to Della Gachette, and surely Lady S. Charles copped fourth position. The other female Calypsonians in this year's competition were Royette Laurent, Mandisa Ducre, and Rhea Stingray Lloyd. You are watching Channel 5 News coming up. Tourism, climate change, and a missing fisherman from Marigot.
Thank you for staying with us. Prime Minister Skerit has told CARICOM counterparts meeting in Guyana that the increasing intensity and frequency of natural disasters prove that climate change is real. Mr. Skerritt said very few countries in the region, if any, have been untouched in some way by the effects of climate change. The Prime Minister says that is why it's so important to ensure that the Paris Agreement is implemented. Of particular importance to us is a Green Climate Fund, which has been established to assist in adapting to and mitigating the effects of climate change. It is critical that there must be relatively quick access to this fund by those it is intended to assist. As laudable as it is, it will be of minimal impact if disbursement is as sluggish as has been the experience with other institutions and agencies. Mrs. Skerritt sounded a note of urgency for the implementation of matters already agreed upon. Today, many of these matters are still pending as they languish in our ministerial councils, committees, commissions, and working groups. Whether this is due to them being inquired or member states asking for time to consult or even officials not being adequately prepared, the effect is the same, a hindrance to progress. And President of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, Ariane Perryman, is calling on tourism stakeholders to redefine their product for sustained success. She offered practical ways in which this can be achieved. Perryman spoke at a DHT organized open dialogue on the state of the industry at Dominica State College Friday. As a member-based association, it is important that we continue redefining our products and services and making them not only just better, but state-of-the-art within our nature island context. Car rentals to soon offer Jeep jungle tours, restaurants to create nightlife around our local artists, not only during the Creole Festival and Carnival fetting seasons, but to offer soirees of painting to Jinping bands or Lapo Cabot. Dive shops to add new services that would attract a millennium diver to our lulling shores that may have decided to do Dominica at least once, but after the first encounter, he knows that he must return. Meantime, Minister for Tourism Robert Tong, who also headlined the event, called on stakeholders to throw their support behind the DHTA. Unfortunately, I don't see sufficient members here. And as the president is saying, members need to be more engaged so that we can truly move the industry together as a team. No one set of persons can do it alone. We all have to come together and, and do it. So the DHT here has spent a lot of time, a lot of um, um, funds, I would imagine, to make this a reality. And we need to give them the support that they require by having as many members being here and engaging and providing and asking questions. So at least we all are aware as to what's going on today. In news from the courts, 47-year-old George Bruni of Thibault has been fined $2,500 to be paid forthwith for possession of firearms without a license and possession of six 357 magazine live rounds. On February 14, police searched Bruni's vehicle and found nothing, but a search of his home yielded an L357 Magnum revolver loaded with six 357 magazine live rounds of ammunition. His lawyer, Wynne Nordy, told the court that the father of four young children was a first-timer to the court and was remorseful for his actions. Nordy told the court his client had also pleaded guilty at the first opportunity and had also fully cooperated with police. He asked the court to temper justice with mercy and impose a non-custodial sentence. He acknowledged that the offense was serious, but said a fine with time to pay would be appropriate. Before sentencing, Magistrate Revere said the charges were very serious and the penalties stiff. On the charge of possession of firearm without a valid license, Bruni was fined $7,500 with $2,500 to be paid immediately. Failure to pay by the time stipulated he will be sentenced to 12 months in jail. Back to some carnival news now. Contestant number five in this year's National Queen Show, Ketisha Joseph of Massac, has played her part in ensuring a continuous school feeding program at the Canefield Massac Primary School. This Queen contestant organized a fundraising basketball venture in her community earlier this month and on Friday donated the proceeds to her former primary school, the Canefield Massac Primary. 
we have come to realize that a lot of children who face abuse are likely to come from homes with poverty, from poverty. We don't, we're not looking to stigmatize anybody, but I went to this primary school and the school feeding program existed then and I have benefited from it. There were days I came to school and I got snack and I got lunch. So I just really want to continue the tradition and donate to this school. Katisha also plans on visit, revisiting the school to help with their greenhouse project. Also, as part of you know tackling poverty in our community, we're gonna come back here to the school on a Saturday and you know teach the students that they can feed themselves. They have a greenhouse right in the front, and we're gonna come with the greenhouse, plant our own fruits and vegetables, grow some trees, and you know the students can take care of the plants. That way, they can learn to feed themselves because I believe anyone who can feed themselves, they can sustain themselves. So that's another project we are looking to do. These activities form part of Katisha's platform, which is Triumph of Justice, continuing to fight on behalf of our youth. I'm a youth leader, so I see the need to continuously protect these young people, let them know that there is more to life, you know, protect them from all forms of abuse and then treatment. And like I said, we realize that, you know, there are different types of abuse, but those who are prevalent are students who, or children, sorry, who come from homes, who, where they face poverty, you know, their basic needs can't be provided. And that way people tend to take advantage of them. So if they know that we can at least provide some of the needs, then there will be a decrease in abuse. And the search continued on Friday for a missing fisherman from Marigot. Police say three fishermen left Marigot Fisheries Complex about 7.30 a.m. Thursday and headed out to sea. About 25 miles off the coast of Marigot, the boat's propeller was damaged and the men lost control of the vessel. Police say two of the men reported that Dwight Bedminster fell into the sea, was injured and sank to the bottom. Contact was made with the Coast Guard and other fisher folk from Marigot. A search was carried out, but so far Bedminster has not been found. Police are inviting anyone with information to contact them. That's news. Kenny Williams is next with your sports highlights. We begin with football where there were two wins and one draw in action from the Dominica Football Association's Division I League on Thursday. Beginning with the Club Lubia versus Trafalgar FC encounter where Lubia won 4-2. Police Sports Club edged out Gully Dream Team 2-1. Kenny Thomas scored for police in the 27th minute of play while the second goal came from Bernard Daru in the 45th minute. Kenny John Baptist netted for Gully. And RC Doctors and LA Stars played to a one-all draw. Frankie Lawrence scored for RC while Ridge Blaise netted for LA Stars. The league continues on Saturday with two doubleheaders. At Newtown, Digital Newtown Juvenile Academy Harlem United will take on St. Mary's Cooperative Credit Union Delson United at 5 p.m. The 7 p.m. match will feature Haitian Angels against East Central. At Poirier Playing Field, All Saints FC will do battle with Malta Carib Bath Estate FC at 4 to be followed by Andy Williams Spartans versus Ray Charles Point Michel at 6 p.m. On Sunday, MV Max and Obamas will clash with Element Agency's LA Stars at 4 p.m. in the first match of a doubleheader at the Dubois Playing Field. Next will be Scarit Northeast versus RC Doctors at 6 p.m. Meantime, in the Flow Premier League on Sunday, the second place position will be determined when Exodus FC comes up against Caribbean Cool Harlem United at Geneva from 3 in the afternoon. Both teams are tied on 35 points. In cricket, Shai Hope's second list A century set the tone for Barbados to take a 110 run win over Leeward Islands in the second semi final of the 2017 Regional Super 50 on Thursday. Batting first, Barbados reached 314 for seven. Shai Hope scored 125, while Craig Brathwaite assisted with 54. Set 315 for victory, Leeward Islands Hurricanes was bowled out for 204 in 47.3 overs. Monsin Hodge supported with 63, and Jermaine Lewis, 41, not out. With this win, Barbados will now play Jamaica in the decider on February 18, their second successive appearance in the final of the tournament. Sports continues with this item where Public Relations Officer of the Dominica Cricket Association, Augustin Beno Pascal, believes 2017 is the year for more exciting cricket. 
with a number of activities planned for the season. He believes a positive change is coming. We were planning to have a, a, a couple of matches starting the weekend. That was the past, the past executive. But we felt, as a new executive, um, it would be better to open the, the 2017 season in, with a ballerama. And, um, and so we have made some tentative plans. I think more details will follow soon, but um, a date has been set really to, to, to start the, the 2017 cricket season with a ballerama. As to what venue we're gonna be using, we're looking at the, at the stadium. However, if we can't really get the stadium because the test match is coming soon and the, the stadium has to be prepared for that, I think it will take place at the gardens. He says the association is looking forward to Pakistan's tour of West Indies in May. It's going to be a challenging um, um, fit for us as a, as a new um, executive, but I'm sure we'll find out by the, by the time the test match will be here, because I think it's sometimes in May, by the time the test match will be there, I think we'll be well, or our fit will be well into the scheme of things and, and we'll be able to execute tonight. Like I said, um, there is no doubt we will, we will be launching it in a, in a press conference form um, because we believe, again, that the people has to be part of, of the cricket. The league will commence with a ballerama on March 5, where players will meet with executive members. On to international cricket, we can tell you that South Africa defeated New Zealand by 78 runs in a T20 encounter on Friday. SA batted first and posted 185 for 6. Hasim Amla added 62 and Faf du Plessis 36. In reply, New Zealand was bowled out for 107 in 14.5 overs. Tom Bruce was the highest scoring batsman for NZ with 33. Meantime, Sri Lanka beat Australia by five wickets in their T20 match on Friday. Australia lost the toss and was sent into bat, scoring 168 for six. Aaron Finch added 43 and Michael Klinger 38. Set 169 for victory, Sri Lanka reached 172 for five in their 20 overs. A. Gonaratne scored 52. Sri Lanka led the three-match series 1-0. Next up. We have results from the Sports Division School's table tennis competition. In the boys' category, Joel Robin of W.S. Stevens beat Edmondson Williams of Wesley Primary School 3-0, 11-4, 11-3, and 11-8. Nayuka James of W.S.S. defeated Michaela Roy of BPSPS 3-0. Final scores 11-7, 11-7, and 11-8, making it 16 straight titles of the boys' open singles. The Open Singles Championship title went to a male student of the WSS, which meant that WSS Primary has never lost the title since 2002. Back with more cricket. Lead Institute went down to Isaiah Thomas Secondary by an innings and 53 runs in action from the Massey Insurance Sports Division Under-20 Cricket Tournament on Friday. Lead batted first and scored 38 all out. Micah Joseph took 5 for 9 and Lincoln Dura 3 for 27. In reply, ITSS declared on a 111 for 1. Micah Joseph made 56 not out and Joshua Vidal 28 not out. In the second innings, the lead was bowled out for 20 runs. Lincoln Dura picked up 5 for 10. On to volleyball now, where the Casabru Secondary female team has booked a spot in the Sports Division Secondary Schools Championships on Thursday. They did so by defeating Isaiah Thomas Secondary in straight sets 3-0. The defending champs dominated the game throughout with scores 25-20, 25-9 and 25-13. Finally in sports, the island-wide White Oak Rum Domino League will enter its final round of matches this weekend. Delvin Esprey is league coordinator. The final round of the White Oak Rum Domino competition will be played this coming Sunday with a number of matches around the island. In Zone A, public enemies will come up against Tremors in Canefield, Rockers and Pebbles will be Penfield in Pebbles, Heats come up against Pity Savan in Canefield, one case play Dom Lake Bay Boys, in Dodan and fire services host Congo Warriors. In Zone B, Wake Up Stars will come up against the Stars Stars in Portsmouth. Dolphin will play Stars in Scottshead. Monzaan will come up against Valence in Maho. La Plaine will come up against non present Castibros. And Lai will come up against Strikers in Layu. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Do have yourself an awesome weekend. We now join our friends at the Met Office for your weekend weather report.
Good evening, Dominica, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marshall Alexander. We begin by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery. A relative dry atmosphere was observed across the islands today as a high pressure system and dominated conditions. Now, taking a look at earlier visible satellite imagery, a few low level clouds moved across the area today, and this resulted in fair to partly cloudy skies across Dominica. Now, taking a look at earlier radar imagery, what it indicated, a few isolated showers across the islands during today. Tonight's weather is expected to be partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy with a few brief scattered showers and tomorrow's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy with a few brief scattered showers. Sea conditions are expected to be moderate in open water with waves peaking near 7 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers you're advised to continue to exercise some caution. Looking ahead throughout the weekend, fair to partly cloudy skies with a few brief scattered showers can be expected on Saturday and Sunday. However, as we move into Monday, a slight increase in cloudiness and some scattered showers can be expected. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, a high pressure system will continue to dominate conditions, resulting in fair to partly cloudy skies across most of the region. However, across the extreme southern portion of the island chain, a slight increase in cloudiness and scattered showers can be expected. Our international cities forecast, clear skies expected in New York, partly cloudy skies expected in Miami, London and Beijing, with some rain expected in Caracas. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.28 a.m. and sunset will be at 6.10 p.m. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit the website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good weekend. To end the news, the headlines again. Prime Minister Skerritt reacts to the presence of a UWP delegation in Guyana seeking to engage CARICOM heads on developments surrounding last Tuesday's protest action and call for his resignation. French national arrested for theft and money laundering and the DFP's Johnson Boston detained, questioned and released without being charged. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris and to our viewers around the world, thank you for watching.